Welcome to the How to Succeed podcast, the show that helps you get to the top and stay there. This is How to Succeed at Raising Your Sales. The following podcast is copyrighted by Sandler Systems, Inc. and protected by U.S. copyright law. Sandler is the worldwide leader in sales, management, and customer service training. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify, and get any of our free resources at sandler.com. I'm your host, Mike Montague, Director of Community Engagement at Sandler, and my guest this week is Clint Unraw. He's a Sandler trainer from Winnipeg, Canada, and we're going to talk with him about how to succeed at raising your sales. Clint, welcome to the podcast. Tell me a little bit about raising your sales. What does that mean? What are we talking about today? <laughs> Let's get into it. Well, thanks so, thanks so much for having me on, Mike. I uh, really appreciate it. Raising your sales is, is kind of my motto uh, that I've developed over the last little while. And it, it came from an experience I had in life about four years ago be, before I met the Sandler team and before I was able to be part of them. You see, what I'd gone through is a professional career. I'd been really, you know, mid-level management and some telecom businesses. And I'd lost a lot of the, the drive to succeed. I'd lost a lot of the, you know, knowledge of how to get myself to the next level. And I'd, I'd felt stuck. So in a bit of a life twist, my wife, my wonderful wife, and my 13-year-old son and my dog, we decided that we were going to take a break from Winnipeg for a bit. We, we sold everything we owned. We, we literally put the house up for market, had someone come into our house to buy our couch one day, and then they bought our bed as well, and we slept on the floor that night. And we ended up buying a sailboat down in Antigua. And for 13 months, we figured out how to change our life from being a little bit stuck in mid-level management and, and a little bit too much routine to raising our sails out in the ocean and raising our sails throughout the Caribbean Sea and really learning a little bit about how does, how does you know, life adversity help you build strength and how do resets help you come back stronger than you ever were before? So that's where it comes from. Yeah, I think it's a, a great story. I can't wait to hear more about it. I, I already have actually, uh, when you've done this talk internally. But um, I think the interesting thing for salespeople here is that, especially during the pandemic and the last couple of years, but at any different point in your career, you can kind of hit that plateau where you run out of ideas. And if you had ideas to raise your sales, you probably would have executed them already, right? If there was some new product market or or customer you could call on that would dramatically grow your business, you would have made that phone call already. And you kind of just get stuck. And then when you get stuck, you start to get burnout out and it, and it cycles downwards. But if you can break that pattern, if you can get back into your energy, if you can shake things up a little bit, I think you can find ways to get rolling because obviously people don't just, you know, run out of gas on the highway and sit there and, <laughs> and get yeah. stuck forever, uh, you find a way to work through it. So I'm excited to talk about that today. And maybe we should start with attitude. If you're going through one of these situations, what is maybe an ideal attitude to have? And what are maybe some common misconceptions or where you see people get stuck? I think a key attitude to keep is, is remembering that you are the, the captain of your own ship or you are the driver of your own vehicle and, and being able to stop pushing the, the failure on external sources is a key opportunity to start on the right path. Uh, I love that one uh, quote that always stuck with me when I was kind of going through a period like this was, are you sitting back saying, when will somebody notice me? Or are you asking yourself, when will I do something worthy of being noticed? Yeah. And I thought like, that's a really cool thing, right? When you take that responsibility that you have to do better, the Steve Martin quote is be so good. They can't ignore you. Uh, that's when things really start moving. That's, that's great. Why do you think um, people kind of languish and, and burn out? Can we dive into the, what not to do here real quick? Sure. I think, I think, you know, the, the burnout is often caused by, by repetition and that, that feeling that you can't control where you're going. And in, when, when, when you stop learning how to do something new, when you stop trying to push yourself to do something you haven't done before, then you'll find yourself in that routine. And then you're just kind of going in a little later, leaving a little earlier, taking a longer lunch, um, you, you live truly in that thing that we talk about a lot in our program called the comfort zone. And that comfort zone is, you know what, I'm doing all right. I don't really have to push much harder than I already am. Why would I put that effort out if there's no, if there's no 
growth for me, if there's no benefit for me, why do it? And then it just, it cycles and cycles. And I think that return on an investment is interesting. I've never ha- heard anybody put it that way, but you're right. When you stop making the progress you were before, then all of that effort seems less and less uh, interesting and, and worth it. And so then when you put in less effort, you get less results and it kind of just uh, mm-hmm. leads to that spiral there. I, I've never thought about it as, as ROI before. I like that. Um, the other thing I was thinking there is um, the risk part of it. So for some reason, I don't know if it's just age or, or maybe sometimes we get burned, right? And we tried something big and it didn't work out. And so then we start hedging our bets uh, a little bit for that reason too, of the downside that, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe when we're young, we're like, yeah, we don't have a whole lot to lose. (laughs) You know, I can go from $6 to $0 in my checking account. It's not that big of a deal, (laughs) but as we get older, as we get burned, I think we do start pulling in those comfort zones, maybe naturally to stop taking those big dramatic risks that would increase our sales by a lot. Yeah, you start hedging your bet. You're looking at this thing and you're like, well, I got this defined benefit pension plan. I I shouldn't go anywhere because people think that's a foolish thing to do. I shouldn't change things. I I would be throwing it all away. You hear, we judge ourselves so much on what others say to us that we end up, you know, stopping ourselves from doing the things that we truly want to do. And if you can't kind of put some of those messages away and eventually just put those in a lockbox and push them out of the way and realize that you got to do what's going to help you be strong. You got to do what's going to get you to that next place and, and, and then do it and then take the risk, take the calculated risk, but don't be afraid of the unknown either. I think a lot of people are so afraid of the unknown that you just get paralyzed. And to me, that takes us right to behavior. I know the saying the rule comes to mind for me that it's not how you act that or not how you feel it determines how you act it's how you act that determines how you feel and i think that can be true but that can also be easier said than done so when you think about the goals plans and actions sometimes i think it is actually an intellectual attitude of of you like taking a big risk to shake things up and and go live on a, a boat that that is actually changing your behavior too because you don't have a choice you can't work the daily commute and do everything that you used to do before. So uh, I don't know whether that's attitude or behavior, but how do you think about it here when we're, we're trying to actually do something different? Yeah, I certainly put it in, in, in that behavior bucket because, you know, when, when, when the routine creates that poor behavior, right, that routine of not doing something new, of not trying something new, and it just puts you into that same routine. And by breaking it, you can really kind of see the possibility of what you can now do. And when I think about the, the batting triangle, when I think about behaviors, attitudes, and techniques, you know, you know, it, I found that the, the life trip that we did really helped my attitude switch a lot. It was one of the easiest things to kind of rewrite what it is that I thought of the world, what it is I thought of my opportunities, what it is I thought of where I could be in life, and what it is I thought I didn't even know I could help other people be, right? That was, that was outside of my realm of thought at the time. And but so attitude got got fixed. It got fixed really well. When I look at my where I'm growing all the time, it's the behavior. The behavior is the one to me that is like I can learn my techniques. I can figure out how to do things. I can I can engage with people when I need to turn it on. But it's that behavior that is the toughest one to create those really strong, repetitive good behaviors where you've got a good routine for the week, a good routine for the day where you know what you need to accomplish and you go out and do it. And in fact, I, th- I feel like that's where a lot of other people struggle the most as well. And for me, I really have to focus on that side. And I really have to focus on, on making sure my clients and the people I get to work with see that it's the behavior that's one of the biggest things to, to fix early on. I agree with all of that. And I think it's also the important behavior. So maybe not just the right behaviors or the, the right habits, but spending your time in the stuff that matters. When I, when I think about raising your sales dramatically, uh, I think you have to change what those behaviors are. So they can't just be making more calls. It's got to be making better calls to better people and better prospects uh, in order to get better sales and better profitable accounts, right? I, I always tell the story uh, of a guy we had in our Sandler training named Dale, who 
was uh, selling roofs and he would do over 365 proposals a year. He would get up on a roof, measure it, make the proposals, and sell them. He was the top roofing sales guy. Uh, fast forward, I'll make the long story short. Six years of Sandler training later, he got on two roofs and made one sale for $4 million. <laughs> and which of his lives do you think were more balanced and more, yeah. Uh, yeah. more fulfilling and more fun? Well, it's definitely you know, going for bigger. So his, his goal and his behavior was to cut the number of proposals in half and double his sales every year for six years. And he pulled it off. It was incredible. But I'm wondering what you think about when you think about like game changing behaviors and how we reset that side of it. You know, I, I love the vision that you shared, you know, having that vision of where you want to go and deciding that, hey, I don't want this life where I have to repeat the same thing over and over today. And it's mundane and it's repetitive and I'm just playing the same game. But I, I love that, too. Like game changing kind of goals is is deciding that you have the confidence to go after things that are more outside your reach. We all naturally have these beliefs that, that you know, I can be a little bit successful in one area, start a business and actually just about three years ago, I started this business and I had six people around a table and six people around a table felt like pretty good success to me. Each time I was in that room, it was six different people from six different companies. I was able to find them and bring them in. And as you see the opportunity to evolve and grow more, you start to realize that the, the that those, those, that size of your account, that whether you're talking about a rabbit, a deer, a bear, or a whale, um, you know, you start to choose where your where your strength is, and really focus those efforts in a smart way to get that op that opportunity to be, you know, you know, reach more people, do it more effective, and get more for yourself. There is a there is a strong balance there. Yeah, and I know I kind of brought this up, but one of the things that I like about it so much is that I think about that in my performances too, like for this podcast that. If one or two more people subscribe, you know, that's great. It'll grow over time. And, and over time, those, you know, interest kind of compounds and, and it pays off, which is okay. But what I find really exciting is when I get to get on stage at the summit in front of 1200 people, or I find a, a new audience and it grows by hundreds or thousands. And so I think to break that pattern of languishing and struggling and just you know, repeating that same, you've got to find those experiences that get you excited that you go, Oh man, this one's different. I'm my hand's going to shake a little bit, or I got to really pay attention or I'm jumping out of bed for this one because it's a special day. And I think those moments are sometimes what people optimize out of their behavior when they're trying to play it safe and build like a nice safe habit. And, you know, I, I, you know, to feed on that, one of my clients actually told me a great quote just a little while ago. He said, one of the best skills you're going to learn is the ability to forget the skills you learned in the past. So what I wonder about when you talk about that, and when I think about my situation too, is we get to these plateaus, right? The podcast might be doing this. I know my social connections are, are, are at that kind of podcast, but now it's, well, wait a second. What got me here might not be what needs to get me to the next step. Now, what do I need to figure out how to evolve, to shift, to take the people that I've already got and bring along that next level and get that new strategy going? I think that comfort zone is also, we, we have some success and then we just let it get to where it got naturally. And then suddenly we don't remember, we got to still push it. We got to still change something. We got to learn something new. We got to figure out how else to do it. And where do we go from here? Yeah, and thank you for nailing the transition to our technique portion of the show. So uh, what are some of those skills? I can imagine when you you know sell a home in Canada to go live on a boat in the Caribbean, pretty much everything changes. You need to figure out how to eat and <laughs> fuel and sleep and uh, you know get to where you're gonna go. All pretty much everything in your life. But uh, so I'd love to hear more about that. But also when you're thinking about raising your your sales, what what are some of those skills we need to learn? What is the big rocks that that kind of stop us from doing that? You know, I, I got to go back to our theme. We talk about all the time. What are my behaviors? So if I talk about my skills that I got to do is is really getting strong on the tonality in my prospecting work. You know, I, I found that the evolution of the tonality has been a struggle for me. I, in, in past, I've been very, very direct. Sometimes I come across as condescending. 
So when you start to become aware of how you've, you've spoken in a way that you just feel you're being natural, but it comes across as condescending to other people, you start to have to take a new awareness of exactly what you sound like. You have to take that feedback and figure out how do I tweak this so that my belief, the beliefs that I'm trying to tell myself to believe truly come through in the way that I communicate with people. And one of those, talk, think about that first few minutes on a cold call. I know we, we, we talk about cold calls forever. And, and, and as we see in our business, it, it's becoming more important to do them along with combinations of other behaviors in order to make new connections and, and get out there and see people. But if you can't start that phone call in such a way that you can accept the fact that this person on the other end of the line might not be the one that's desperately waiting for your call, if you can't have that confidence that it's either going to be a match or it's not, and it's okay either way, you're going to fail. At it. So I think the, the biggest technique that I've been focusing on for me is figure out how to manage that tonality, figure out how to manage that connection with other people. Use all of the skills that were taught at Bonding Rapport, disk profiling and transactional analysis to really make that engagement stronger. Yeah, that's, that's good. I was thinking about in, uh, you know, in changing the game too. Uh, I know it's a stereotype, but I got to imagine a condescending Canadian. If you move to like Boston, you would be the nicest guy in the room. Uh, it'd fix your problem there. Maybe, maybe that's just change the scenery again, right? Go somewhere else and, and uh, you don't come across that way anymore. There you go. And I think I just defended two groups, Canadians and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're okay to laugh at ourselves from time to time. We like it. Yeah. Uh, all right. And uh, so I think that's great. Uh, that's definitely one. I think tonality also kind of, to me, leans back into that attitude and reframing. Well, maybe it's not just doing the same thing harder. Maybe I need to change and do different things. And that kind of goes towards the attitude and behavior we're talking about. But also in the techniques, I, I think we see a lot of salespeople who try to go more positive rather than maybe going towards the negative, which breaks the, the pattern and, and do something different. And so, uh, you know, again, David Sandler said, if the competition does it, stop doing it and, and try something else. I feel like in this situation that we've been talking about, that's the whole game, that if what you're doing is getting you this current level of results, you have to find a new technique and you're going to have to take some risks and learn how to do things poorly in order to get to do them well. Do any other techniques right. come to mind here? Oh man, you know, I, I could, I could walk through the entire Sandler system on, on how to do these things, but I love, I love learning how to have good conversations with people. I love learning how to set strong expectations. One of my biggest beliefs is if I'm going to be successful in life, I got to prepare people for what's coming, not just throw it at them suddenly, right? So when we think about our upfront contracts, we're working on that with some of our clients just this week. And how do you make sure that the future is not a scary future, that it's a mutually beneficial future, that avoiding these typical you know, non-functional engagements is, is not good for either one and set something up that both can align to in a truly honest manner. I think that's one of the other big techniques that I, I believe is, is crucial to success. All right. And then I want one fun one for anybody who's thinking about, you know, going to do their sailing trip around the world. What's one technique they need to know before they buy the boat? Well, I would say when, uh, when to use the sales you've got. So kind of similar to like when to use the tools you have in sales, when to use the right sales. One of the, one of the most disastrous moments we had was when we were going from, uh, we were going from, I think it was St. Martin over to the British Virgin Islands. And I decided to throw up a sale that I hadn't used before that I was excited to try out. And, and it was meant for being dead downwind. And so I put it up and we were a little off the downwind and, you know, we leave this anchorage at about three o'clock in the morning. So it's good and dark when we're leaving. And I get this sail up and it's not right. And it's flapping in the wrong way. I go up and I try to use this, this sail that I'd never used before. I put it away and it doesn't go away properly. So now I've got a problem with it flapping around the top. You know, a couple hours later, I was finally able to go up on deck. So now I'm in the middle of the ocean. I go up on deck and, uh, and I, I go to try to take it down and it's jammed and it's not working and we got about eight hours to sail still and I want to fix this thing. And eventually I do something absolutely foolish. I decided to do something that basically turned me into a part of the sail. I took the sail, I unclipped it from the boat itself and I held onto it with one hand while it was, held, while it was attached to the mass up the top. Uh -oh. An absolutely disastrous plan. 
I don't know why at that moment I decided I would do this. I was certainly never taught to do it. I certainly would never do it again in the future, but I certainly learned that lesson. Know how to use your equipment before you get out there because you can cause incredible damage, not only to something that's materialistic like a boat, but also to yourself and your family if you really screw that up. Now we got out of that one uh, and we, got, we, we were able to recover, thank goodness, by the, by the grace of my wife and her friend that made it all better. But, you know, you learn that when you go through something, you'll never do it again. You're going you're gonna to not repeat a bad failure. And taking a bad failure, it, it just puts that in your brain that you'll never do it again. And you'll be stronger the next time through. And you won't have to deal with that particular, particular risk. Well, I love that. I think that's a great lesson for sales too. I mean, sometimes you're going to lose them. You're going to, you're going to blow it up and it's not going to work. And you yeah. get a lesson that now has a great ROI for the whole rest of your life. Uh, you got one that you're not going to forget when it's a bad one. Uh, so as long as they are survivable, uh, yes, then most risks are, are good and teaching you a lesson or, uh, are getting you at least to a more interesting place. So, I want to learn a little bit more about you, Clint, here. It's your first time on the podcast. We're talking with Clint Unra. He is a Sandler trainer from Winnipeg, Canada. And I'm wondering at this point in your career, how you define success. I define success by doing something that I haven't done before. So it's, it's all about making sure that the scenarios that I'm in push me to be the better version of myself not allow me to fall into a comfort zone that means the rest of my life will be just like portions of my previous life. I will push. Success is knowing that more is out there and having the courage and the ability to make smart risks and go get it. And we just got a good lesson in sailing, but in sales, what was your biggest hurdle or lesson learned you had to get over in order to be successful? Oh, in, my, in sales, I was definitely someone who had to learn how to make a phone call. And when I first got into this business, I had spent my life avoiding those situations. And now I've got myself into uh, a place where while I had worked with enterprise sales teams for many, many years, what I had done was I avoided putting myself out there in front of people. I'd always figured I could be successful behind the scenes. And by becoming part of the Sandler team, I, I learned how to be successful in front of the scenes as well. And I never would have had that skills to do this job had I not learned about Sandler and joined the family. I love that. And do you have a favorite Sandler rule? Yeah, I'm going to go with the, a life without risk is a life without growth. It's a key insight to everything that I do every day. I love it. And I think we've been explaining that one for the last 20 minutes or so. So we can wrap it up here in a nice big bow. When you think about how to succeed at raising your sales, what is one attitude you'd like people to have leaving the podcast? Believe that you can always be more. And what is one behavior you would like people to do? Structure your week to be successful. Know what you need to accomplish and check them off when you got it done. And the best technique, tool, or hack to use? So too many, too many. Um, work on your tonality. Tonality is a key piece of creating relationships with other people. Everything else falls flat if you can't do it right. Clint, thanks for being on the show. Again, for more information on Sandler, you can get any of our free resources at sandler.com or you can reach out to a local trainer or our enterprise uh, training department as well. If uh, you have more than one state or country in your company, we can help you with that as well. And don't forget, subscribe to this podcast, send this episode to somebody that you think needs to hear it. And thank you for listening. Remember, whatever you are, be a good one. The How to Succeed podcast is brought to you by Sandler, the worldwide leader in sales management and customer service training with over 200 locations. For more information, visit Sandler.com. The Sandler Summit returns in...